Have you ever wondered? Hello everyone. Welcome back to Inquisitive Creation. My name is Gila and I will be your trusted companion to explain things you ever wondered about but does not exactly know what they are. Avian flu, notably H5N1, stands at the forefront of global health concerns recently. Due to its ability to infect multiple species, including humans, with potentially devastating consequences. In this video, we'll explore the biology of avian flu, its history of outbreaks, current developments, and why understanding this virus is crucial for global health security. Join us as we unpack the complexities of avian flu and discover why it could be the next pandemic we need to watch closely. But before we start, I would like to express my heartfelt appreciation to all our new subscribers. Your support means the world to me and fuels my passion to keep creating informative and valuable videos. Thank you for joining our community. Your enthusiasm drives me to explore and share more valuable insights on important topics and issues. Now, let's dive into today's video. As far back as the 1990s, scientists warned that a new form of avian influenza could spark another flu pandemic. H5N1 hasn't made that leap yet. But with every passing year, this vicious virus strikes more species. It regularly kills millions of wild and farmed birds while jumping between more than two dozen mammals. These include mink, sea lions, dairy cows and alpacas, humans too and often with deadly consequences. For now, we're just collateral damage, this virus still thrives best in birds. Scientists' great fear is that H5N1 eventually gains the final, crucial adaptations needed to transmit person to person. But that last leap is hard to achieve and even tougher to predict. So, how did we get here, and is it possible to stay one step ahead of this ever-evolving virus? In 1996, scientists first identified a new, dangerous form of bird flu, dubbed H5N1, in farmed geese in Guangdong province in southern China. In one small farming town, the death rate in geese hit more than 40%. By 1997, H5N1 had spread from China into Hong Kong, it tore through several poultry farms, causing widespread death in chickens but it still seemed to be a strictly avian infection. However, that May, a healthy three-year-old boy was hospitalized with a striking set of symptoms. He had a fever, sore throat, and abdominal pain, and he deteriorated within days. The child soon died of respiratory distress, kidney failure, and a rare post-viral condition known as Ray's syndrome. Ray's syndrome is a rare but serious condition that can cause swelling in the liver and brain. It most commonly affects children and teenagers recovering from a viral infection such as the flu or chicken pox. Word of the peculiar infection made its way to scientists in the United States Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Lab testing from the American team helped confirm an unexpected finding. That boy from Hong Kong was the first known case of a human H5N1 infection. At that time, nobody had heard of H5N1. Nobody knew, was this really the cause of his death? Later that summer, a group of scientists from Center for Disease Control were sent to Hong Kong to investigate. The team looked at lab procedures and how specimens were being handled. They visited the hospital where swabs were first collected, they even went to the child's daycare. There were no signs of anyone else catching the virus. By the time the team of scientists left a month later, they figured the boy's infection was just an unusual one-off or even a sample contaminated by accident in a lab. That November, news broke of someone else infected with H5N1. We now had a second case. And this was, potentially, a signal of a much larger outbreak. These fears proved true. Hong Kong's 1997 outbreak eventually struck more poultry across the region and caused 18 human infections in total, including six deaths. The team of scientists from Center for Disease Control returned to Hong Kong to track infections. They collected specimens and test more people to see if anyone was carrying the virus. 
Experts from Center for Disease Control worried they were losing control of the outbreak. The widespread testing did show a reassuring pattern. Human cases remained relatively rare, while poultry cases were plentiful. This suggested that people were getting infected through direct exposure to sick birds, not from each other. Hong Kong health officials raced to contain the virus by segregating all geese and chickens. They introduced poultry import restrictions and culling every single poultry market or chicken farm by the end of the year. The threat seemed to pass and the brief crisis marked the first instance where a pandemic may have been averted, several researchers later wrote. For a few years, H5N1 outbreaks weren't detected widely. But in 2003, the subtype re-emerged in Asia and caused disease in farmed chickens. Not long after, the virus hitched a ride along wild bird migration routes to infect poultry across Africa, the Middle East, and Europe. As the virus struck bird species around the globe, from raptors to ducks to other wild waterfowl, it also gained countless opportunities to evolve. Influenza is known for having quite a knack for genetic change. This family of viruses infects its unwitting hosts by using specific surface proteins to attach to receptors on host cells. It's also how each avian flu subtype gets its name. H-proteins refer to hemagglutinin and unproteins to neuraminidase. Various combinations of those proteins are possible and certain ones are capable of causing more severe disease. Not every flu virus has the right proteins to target every species. Avian flus are simply better at binding to specific bird receptors, while flus that strike mammals preferentially bind to mammalian receptors. Over the years, hundreds of humans have been sporadically infected with H5N1 bird flu with high rates of death. The virus basically goes straight down into the lungs and causes pneumonia. Then, in 2012, controversial research emerged showing scientists were able to stitch H5N1 proteins onto the human flu virus that sparked a 2009 pandemic. Those tweaks suddenly allowed it to spread between ferrets in a lab. As reported at the time, all it took was for extra mutations for this form of bird flu to better bind to human like receptors and copy itself at high enough levels to transmit through respiratory droplets. That study didn't reflect what was happening in the real world. But other researchers are also watching H5N1 protein closely, specifically its H protein. The mutations observed in the H protein is believed to impart an enhanced ability of the H5N1 virus to replicate in mammalian cells. While none of this change gave the virus an ability to spread human to human, it all marked an unwelcome step in the wrong direction. With each passing year, H5N1 continued to evolve and create new variations. Genes started swapping between the various flu viruses circulating in poultry and wild birds and soon new subtypes were identified, the H5N6 and H5N8. These two subtypes became the dominant global forms of bird flu, even replacing the original H5N1 viruses. But it wasn't long before a new evolutionary branch brought a fresh form of the H5N1 virus roaring back. Virologists believe that those years of gene shuffling led to a supercharged branch of H5N1 known as clade to 344 b Clades refer to groups of viruses that have evolved from a common ancestor and share a set of genetic characteristics. Clades are identified based on genetic sequences and are used to track the evolution and spread of viruses. This helps scientists understand how the virus is changing over time. H5N1 clade to 344B viruses became dominant across much of the globe by the end of 2021 including the first detections in wild birds in both the United States and Canada. This particular lineage is noteworthy because it infects not only ducks and chickens, but a wide range of bird species. This broad host range allows the virus to spread globally by following migratory routes. Within its first year in Canada, the virus's spread was staggering. H5N1 infected nearly 5 million domestic birds. 
Hit close to 300 farms and production facilities and ravaged untold numbers of wild species. Those outbreaks led to mass bird culling and heightened surveillance, along with rising concern that this virus was capable of new surprises. By 2022, the latest form of H5N1 had firmly established itself as a global threat. A massive outbreak of clade to 3 4 for B on a Spanish mink farm late that year raised new red flags. The symptoms were disturbing, bloody snouts, tremors and a lack of muscle control, along with a spike in deaths. Most alarming, scientists said, was that H5N1 appeared to be directly spreading between mink, offering an early signal that the virus could be capable of transmitting between other mammals as well. It wasn't long before another species took a hit. Throughout 2023, more than 24,000 sea lions died of bird flu along the coasts of Peru, Chile, Argentina, Uruguay, and Brazil. Scientists suggest that the regular exposure of animals to infected birds, including consuming their carcasses, contributed to the rapid and widespread transmission, resulting in numerous fatalities. Additionally, there is concern about the possibility of mammal-to-mammal -mammal transmission exacerbating the situation. In early 2024, dairy farmers in Texas started noticing something odd, birds were dropping dead on their farms. Barn cats, too. Then farmers started raising alarms about sick cows with strange symptoms that weren't explained through all the usual tests. High fevers, fatigue, and a drop in milk production. Specialized lab testing later confirmed the unprecedented. H5N1 was now striking cows. The virus spread fast, hitting more than 130 dairy cow herds across a dozen states by late June. The infection caused severe symptoms, including death and miscarriages in some cows. Additionally, three mild infections were reported among farm workers. Scientists believe this may represent only a fraction of the true number of cases due to limited surveillance and inconsistent data sharing between states and federal authorities. H5N1 infections have been reported in more than 130 dairy cow herds across 12 states in the United States. Official numbers suggest the explosion of H5N1 among dairy cows is putting far more people in the virus path than prior animal outbreaks. The first issue with cattle is that the outbreak persisted rather than subsiding. The second concern is that cattle farming involves large populations of animals and we maintain close proximity to them. Burning questions remain about the outbreak, including how and when cows were first infected. Genetic sequencing suggests it could have been as early as December 2023. The mechanism behind cow-to-cow -cow transmission is also unclear. There are no signs of any major new mutations. Also, it does not appear to be transmitted directly from cow-to-cow -cow through typical viral means such as coughing or breathing in close proximity. Instead, it seems to be transmitted via some intermediate vector. High levels of virus found in the cow's udder suggests shared milking equipment is playing a role. H5N1 is also showing up at very high levels in infected cow's milk. A recent study suggests small amounts of virus may remain infectious even after pasteurization, a specialized heating process meant to neutralize pathogens. While 2024 isn't the first year cats have been infected with H5N1, it's a grim one. Data shows farm cats in the United States who drank raw milk from infected cows had death rates of nearly 50%. Another unexpected development occurred in mid-May when alpacas in Idaho tested positive for H5N1, marking the first cases among this species. Shortly thereafter, mice in New Mexico were also found to be infected. Additionally, there have been sporadic human cases involving other forms of bird flu including the first known human death from the H5 into subtype in Mexico. Australia reported its first human H5 in one case in a child who had traveled to a bird flu hotspot in India. After years of infecting a wide array of animals and an increasing number of humans, what's next for H5 in one?
H5N1 has now developed several key adaptations that enable it to replicate in mammals and human exposure is on the rise. While several more random viral mutations are required to trigger a human pandemic, there is also a bypass option according to experts. If the virus co-infects a host alongside a human influenza virus and their genes shuffle together, it can result in a new threat combining genetic code from both the avian and human viruses. This phenomenon has occurred before. The h 2 n flu pandemic in 1957 was caused by an influenza virus that emerged. Through the reassortment of a previously circulating human flu and an avian flu virus, Similarly, the h 3 n pandemic followed about a decade later. The 2009 H1N1 swine flu pandemic also involved a reassorted human pig virus. Several scientists liken this process to a genetic gamble. Give a virus enough opportunities to encounter various mammals and it might hit the evolutionary lottery. Acquiring the necessary mutations to spread through a new species, in this case, humans. While scientific understanding is crucial, the broader picture is that outbreaks and pandemics will occur over and over again unless the world remains vigilant. This vigilance entails a comprehensive approach to pandemic preparedness. This includes extensive surveillance networks, rapid sharing of outbreak information, and international collaboration to develop and distribute vaccines. Without these efforts, we really have our hands tied behind us, as some experts emphasized. To conclude, as we've explored today, avian flu remains a significant concern for global health with its potential to evolve and spread rapidly. The unpredictable nature of this virus underscores the importance of continued vigilance and research. Remember, staying informed and following public health guidelines are our best defenses against this and other pandemic threats. It's crucial that we support and trust in scientific efforts to monitor and combat these potential outbreaks. On an individual level, practicing good hygiene and being aware of travel advisories can make a big difference. Now, if you found this video informative, please like, share, and subscribe for more content on health and science. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and never stop being amazed by the wonders of the scientific world. This is your friend Gilo, signing off from Inquisitive Creation. Thank you so much for watching.